Hey folks, David Stewart here. Let's talk a little bit about processes. Um, establishing, creating, and sticking to a creative process that you are going to have and you're going to do every single day. It's really, really important. This video is a little bit of a follow-up to a video I made last week called Eight Keys to Being a Prolific Creator, Being a Prolific Artist, or Being Productive in the Creative Arts. And what I wanted to do is make a video of each of those eight points, going a little bit more in depth and giving a little bit more specifics and uh, some advice that I think it can be used in general and by very specific kinds of artists uh, to give a little bit more help to how to execute this. I started with have a creative process. That was number one on the list because it is the most important by far. Um, having goals doesn't necessarily give you the goals, right? It doesn't make you achieve your goals. Having a process will make you achieve the goals. Not just that, but once you achieve the goal, if you have a process that you are committed to sticking to, it's going to push you past your goal to the next thing that you want, the next thing that you want. So eventually, uh, sort of the making a habit of whatever productive routine you want, that's what's going to end up delivering you your first book, your second book, your third book, your first album, your second album. That's what's going to deliver you the first song you learn and the last song you learn. Um, it's going to deliver you all the stuff that you want. Your first painting and your last painting um, are all going to be delivered by the same process and then, you know, repeating and repeating, and repeating. Um, so, but I get a lot of questions like, how do you establish a writing process? What does your writing process look at, look like? What does a practice process look like? I get a lot of these questions. And so I wanted to go into more specifics, but before I go into the specifics, I wanted to give you a really, really good example of the importance of processes in understanding what you're doing um, as a creative individual, and although most people will not think of this as a creative endeavor, it is in a lot of ways, um, that is bodybuilding. Bodybuilders are excellent at creating a process, adjusting their process, and sticking to their, prog their, their process really, really strictly in order to get what they want, um, which is, you know, their body, you know, that, that huge muscular body um, with no fat on it. And so a bodybuilder, has a routine. They do they do certain things every single day. They go to the gym every single day. Depending on where they are in their split, they do a certain workout. They plan their workouts ahead of time. They do a certain warm up for that. They eat a certain way all day long. Um, they take whatever substances they need to take in whatever quantities they determined um, in order to, to get what they want. And then the end result of that process is the is the body. But once they get the body, you can't stop there. You keep going with the process because. If your goal is to get like six pack abs and you get the six pack abs and then you go off the diet, then the six pack abs go away. Um, that's the problem with like the diet mentality is that you get the goal and then you get off the diet and then you just have to do the diet again. Um, so bodybuilders are really good at being able to, to manage this and not just manage this in a day to day way. Uh, because on the Mac micro, whatever you're starting out as, you should start with thinking of just like, I'm doing the same thing every day. Like I'm going to get up, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to run every single day, whatever it's going to be. Um, I'm going to get up, I'm going to write a thousand words. It's, it's really great to start there. But as you get further along, you realize that it different, the process has a, a meta to it and you have to be sort of changing what you're doing. The main thing is that you're doing whatever it is every single day. You're contributing to that every single day, even if it's something slightly different. You know, like a bodybuilder will have a different workout on Tuesday than they have on Wednesday. They do something different Tuesday morning than they do Tuesday afternoon. Um, you know, and if, they, if they're doing contest prep, they start eating differently, they work out differently um, in order to sort of refine what they're doing um, during a particular part. There's a whole cycle to what they're doing. Um, and it's the same thing with writing, right? Um, it's easy for me to say, and I've said this in videos, like just write a thousand words a day. Uh, and that's because that's where most people get stuck. They can't finish the first draft of their book. And so that's the beginner push. Just write a thousand words a day and you're gonna get, you're gonna get there, you're gonna get there, just trust me. But the reality is, is that writing is occurs in four different phases. If you're writing a book, it's in four different phases. The first phase, which is planning. Maybe I'll do it this way so it goes left to right on your screen. You know, planning, which is what story am I going to write? What characters are in it? World building, all that kind of stuff. That's the planning phase. Different people spend different amounts of times on these phases, by the way. You know, then you have the writing, the actual prose phase, which is what most people get hung up on and can't complete. Then there's two more phases, which is revision and then publishing, which are their own phases. And there's different things you do depending on what you, uh, what your end goals are for all of those phases. So, and in, in, within one book, you may be planning it, you may be executing it, you may be rewriting it, or you may be attempting to publish it. All of those um, are different phases. And so when you get to that last phase of publishing, you're like, I didn't hit my thousand words today. It's like, well, if you spend a substantial amount of time, you know, 
prepping things for publication or doing promotion, then that's part of the process as well. So what you're doing every single day may change depending on where you are, and that's okay. Um, the point is that you have to know where you are in the meta as well so that you're doing it every single day. If you're not working in some capacity uh, with a knowledge of what you're doing, then you're basically losing, losing sight of where the process is going to take you. Uh, and likewise, if you are able to do that meta, then you just repeat the meta. So it's like you get it, you publish the book, next day you wake up, start planning the next book, writing it, did it publish it? Okay, it's out, next book. You know, you just go down the list. You just can keep continuing that cycle. Even though it's more than a day, you know, you're still doing something every day and you're doing, um, and you're doing a large process that completes itself in cycles. Um, as a musician, it's a little bit easier. You can just say, hey, you need to practice every day. Um, but practicing every day without an idea of what you need to be practicing is important. So I used to, for my students, break things down in routine. You're going to do these warm-up exercises, these technical exercises. You're, you're going to work on these measures of these pieces until they sound a certain way. And then you're going to finish with playing through your repertoire that you already know. That's a great practice process. Warm-ups and etudes, new material, play through the material that you already know at the end. Um, what that would look like um, if you're a professional, like I was with um, with classical guitar, is I'd get up super early in the morning, like five in the morning, and I go practice, uh, and I do technique for one to two hours, <laughs> just etudes, just technique, just like doing slurs, just doing scales, just doing technical exercises. Then I go work on new music for like two hours. I take a break. I usually have to teach a couple classes at that point or somewhere in there. Um, and then in the afternoon, I'd play through all my repertoire, which would take another one to two hours, depending on how much of it I wanted to play through. And if I was sort of cleaning for a recital or I really wanted to make sure that all of my back repertoire was was covered, I would you know spend three hours of that. Now, um, that's like six, eight hours of practicing sometimes. When I started to get more efficient, I stopped... I cut down on the playing the stuff I already know part um, to remind myself, and I started to do you know a chunk on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and that's part of the process as well. I'm I'm doing some of it every single day, but I'm not doing all of it every single day. Um, and I have an idea, I have a plan in mind for how the process is going to be divided up over days. So that's very very important. As a visual artist, if you're a visual artist, um, it, it may end up looking different for you. And by the way, everybody has to everybody has to have a different process depending on where their strengths are and where they are on that meta. If you need a lot of work to develop your technique, obviously it's okay to spend a lot of time working on your technique if you're trying to become a better guitarist. And if you already are very good at technique, it's okay to spend less time doing that and more time focusing on the music because of course the technique is in the music itself. So when you practice the music, you are still getting a lot of the technique. Um, so it's okay to adjust these things. I don't, I don't prescribe that every person must do it the same way. Same thing with, with writing, you know, uh, not everybody has to, you know, different people spend different amounts of times on like their drafts. They may, they may get their first draft done immediately. And then their revisions take 10 times longer. It just depends on who you are. Um, as a visual artist, it may look quite different for you because, um, that has a different, different cycle. If you're a painter, uh, you know, depending on what you're doing, if you're a painter, you may be like, start by doing a sketch and then you go to the painting that you're working on and you work on it, or you may have one big painting you're working on. And so each day you do a sketch that incorporates some element of the painting that you're planning to execute. There may be a planning phase on it and the sketch is part of that. Then you start working on the pan painting. Um, and then there'll be revisions of paintings, you know, where you're, fixing details and then maybe eventually you have a complete painting the point is that you go every single day you have an idea of what you're doing and that you're you're trying to stick to it every single day if you're not actively sort of executing your your process either on the long term or on the on the daily um, that's when you're going to stall out and not be able to finish the things uh, that you want to finish and so for me like bodybuilding is a great example of that because um, any sort of short circuiting of the process uh, ends up um, delivering something less than the final product and you can see that it shows i know most of you are probably not into bodybuilding but like you know you could see oh well, this guy you know this guy didn't didn't quite cut enough fat he looks like soft uh, or this guy he didn't you know his legs are too big he focused on the wrong thing for the year when he was when he was lifting or something like that and so you get a you get a really like easy to see idea of how you know any kind of mal malalignment of your process 
changes the changes to how the whole product works. Okay, so um, hopefully that's useful for you and that's a little bit more specifics. Um, the amount of time you spend doing this is going to vary by how much time you can do it. Um, keep in mind that the more time you spend, obviously the quicker you reach what you're trying to reach. Um, however, if you think, oh, I'm going to practice eight hours a day for a month and get my repertoire down and then I won't have to practice anymore. It's like, no, it'd be better if you practice less time, took longer to get there and continued that practice habit in, in, into infinity. And, and then you'll continue to get better and better and learn more and more and continue to not get worse. Because as soon as you stop practicing, you start getting worse. Um, that's how it works. So what kind of stuff has my process delivered to me that you can check out? Well, I got some books here. Um, so you can check out all these uh, at dvspress.com. There's links for them. Um, you can also find them on Amazon. Hopefully links will be down below. Muramasa Blood Drinker, this is my um, samurai novel. And I will talk a little bit more with writing processes. I had a very specific process um, for writing this that helped me to finish the book and sort of kept me honest. And that was I, I published it in a blog um, bi-weekly for a long time. So essentially every Tuesday and Thursday I had this deadline for how much work I had to have uh, completed on this particular book. And that worked well. That was a great process. Um, Prophet of the God Seed, uh, this was one I followed a similar process for. Um, the cover looks different now, but this one's actually free on Amazon right now and a couple other retailers if you can find it. Garmish and Farmer, this is a very small little fairy tale, but it's fun and it's kid appropriate, also free on Amazon. And then my latest, my latest book, Water of Awakening, it's a fantasy novel. Um, this one I had a really strict process of very clear planning, very clear execution, very clear editing, very clear publishing. I executed my meta plan pretty well with this one. Um, and so I'm looking to repeat that, uh, repeat that process for the next book, uh, which will hopefully be coming out in December. Um, what's coming out this quarter is actually not a book at all, but a album. Okay. So I have a new album. It's going to be released under the name Zul, um, Z-U-L, uh, that's going to be my group name. And that includes me and the guests that are on the album and will include me on guests on the next album. It's basically ambient rock or instrumental rock. Uh, mixed with like minimalist stuff if you're into like Philip Glass or Steve Reich. Um, uh, so it's going to be mixed a little bit with that stuff and there's orchestra stuff and there's also classical guitar on it. It's a very, very eclectic mix. I call it um, a rather eclectic album. And so hopefully you'll give that a chance. That comes out on October 31st. And my preferred platform for you to order it on is actually... Um, is actually going to be Bandcamp. And so that's going to be zolonline.bandcamp.com. You can also just find out more at zolonline.com. Um, the Bandcamp one will be cheaper. It's in 24-bit if you get the digital. I will be selling physical copies through it that are signed. So keep a lookout for that. Make sure that you are um, following me at facebook.com slash David Van Dyke Stewart um, to keep appraised of that or be on one of my mailing lists because I'll have it. Uh, I'll have stuff out on that as well. So I appreciate you watching. You can see what I've done with it. And I, I look forward to seeing what you do with uh, your creative endeavors. Um, I'll see you guys next time.